our camera people, they are ready. They took 10 minutes. Am I correct? Francilia, did you time them for me? But that's okay. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Only a life lived for others is a life worth living. Brothers and sisters, we, the members of the Holy Family Parish, together with our parish priest, Father Vincent, Father Cleophas Joseph, Deacon Joseph, we extend heartfelt condolences to the wife, children, brothers, grandchildren, and all other family members of our dear brother, George Edmund Willick. The children of George Edmund Willick say to one and all, welcome, welcome, bienvenue. We appreciate your presence here this afternoon in such large numbers. Those who've traveled from overseas, those from all over St. Lucia, especially the community of Badini. Seeing all of you here this afternoon, it is so, so comforting. Those joining us via live stream, we say thanks to all of you. A quote from John MacArthur. All Christians are but God's stewards. Everything we have is on loan from the Lord entrusted to us for a while to use in serving God. This afternoon, brothers and sisters, we know that some of us would know that our brother Willick, Uncle Willick, go for He was a majestual I was. Hence the reason you see a touch of pink and you would notice the girls and the boys, they are wearing pink. Nouvelle chen la was la vivant, even if we are dead. But alive or dead, we still belong to the Lord. So at this moment, let us unite our voices as we join in singing a La Rose song. Ouvert, ouvert, ouvert paulea, pour majestua la was a tweet. Feel free to stand and dance to the music. Is Adu in the house? Adu was supposed to be our shot well, but he's not in. Uve 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 pauleya eklewe pauleya. Uve uve. Bye. 
in church. We now invite Beverly Bissett, goddaughter, niece of the deceased, to deliver the eulogy. Patient hearing, please. Good afternoon, everybody. I am a niece and goddaughter of the deceased Uncle Willix. My name is Nadia Beverly Joseph Bissett. The family, as Kristen said, would like to extend thanks for coming today to celebrate with us. We also extend a special thanks to those who traveled from very great and far distances to be present today, as well as those who have taken the time off to join us via live stream. Thank you very much. Today we say goodbye to George Edmund Edwards, also known as Willix Joseph and Gofuea. Uncle Willix was born on the 25th of October, 1939, to his parents James Joseph and Edmonis Joseph. He was the third sibling of his parents' 11 children. He was bestowed the job of big brother by his father, who entrusted him to take care of his siblings when he passed away. His younger siblings looked up to him and called him Go Fuera. Uncle Willix was a romantic man. Oh, how, yes, he loved the ladies, and they loved him back. However, only one caught both his eyes and his heart. He met his soulmate in the year 1961. Her name is Agatha Fersois Edmund, whom we affectionately call C.C. She became his wife in 1988, and these two individuals were inseparable. Wherever you saw one, you would see the other. But today, C.C. is not here physically with us, but her spirit and presence are represented by her children. Uncle Willis attended the Castries R.C. Boys Primary School and upon graduation became a laborer at the sugarcane field in Cul-de-Sac. He then moved to the geese banana industry and thereafter off to work as a stevedore in Port Authority 
where he remained for many years and made many friends. He loved working the land and farming was his passion. His garden was located at Chope and there he toiled daily, working the land to provide food for his family. It was through farming that he and his wife were able to care for their five children, three boys and two girls. His wife sold the produce on market days at the Castry City Market. But wait, where did this passion come from? Do you know that Uncle Willix becoming a farmer was not his first option? Oh no. This is how it all went down. Uncle Willix was excited to go to his first interview for a brand new job with Abel. He made sure that his clothes were pressed and his shoes shined the night before. Uncle was always a smart dresser. On the morning of the interview, Uncle woke up and prepared himself early to impress Abel. He dressed up, but he could not find his shoes. He searched high, he searched low, and everywhere in between. It looked like the shoes had disappeared in thin air. Uncle was very upset. His father asked him why he wasn't going to the interview, and he answered that he could not find his shoes. Lo and behold, later that day, his older brother G-Boy, my father Girard, returned home very sharply dressed, wearing Uncle Willick's shoes. <laughs> Uncle Willick was piping red upset. The shoes that would have landed him that job if he went to the interview were on his brother's feet. What happened next is for another story. He believed in a family working together and this meant that his children too would be farmers, whether they wanted to be or not. Of course, there were some who enjoyed every single moment of going to the farm and others who complained relentlessly. Chopin had a special son, one which was always a few degrees hotter than any other place in Madly. Monica, his youngest daughter, was not overjoyed to walk in the hot sun, but spending time with her father on the farm was a prized memory for her. She walked side by side with her father, weeding, planting, harvesting, doing whatever he asked of her. What a wonderful daughter. Lorena, on the other hand, would complain and drag herself at slow speed to the garden, crying because there were worms in the soil. That did not bother Uncle Willix one bit. All he knew was that no matter what she said, she would be helping in the garden whether she wanted to or not. Worst of all, Lorena did not even have a green thumb. Everything she planted quickly died. So we still do not understand why Uncle Willix took her along anyway. But what we do know is that he appreciated his children being with him. Lorena declared that her father was the strongest man. After such experience with boxing, there is no other way we could say otherwise. We'll hear about the boxing now. Why? Lorena saw her father heap seven to eight bunches of bananas on his head to carry without flinching or swaying. Steady he walked with the heavy load. No other person could have matched his strength. His right hand was his son Elliston, and he was very proud of him. Every activity, be it farming, cooking, festivals or events, Elliston was always there, the dependable son. Uncle's greater quarrel was with his youngest son, John, a.k.a. T. John, who once an excellent plow of the land had a mouth, an attitude that tested his father's patience every day, but never waned his father's love. Uncle Willis loved all his children unconditionally, in all families, however, there are favorites. 
I know that Monica will say otherwise, but we all know that Buko was his favorite, his prized child. Uncle supported Buko's endeavors, especially when he wanted to be a bus driver. Uncle made sure that Buko acquired bus after bus after bus after well, ladies and gentlemen, just know that Buko could not drive properly. <laughs> Uncle Willis lived the full land. He loved dancing and was the best country and western dancer in Badney. Strange how so many Badney people declared that they were the best. But Monica will tell you, yes, her father was the best because he taught her how to dance country and western. Music was in Uncle's blood. He would be ever present at all Bele Solo and at La Wars events. He was also an active member in the community and assisted in all ways possible. Being an excellent boxer, Uncle Tito and his brother proudly expressed how Uncle Willis used to win all his boxing matches held in Cassidy's and how his punch was so powerful that he busted his glove wide open at a particular match. Only Uncle Tidon remembers these details. Uncle did not withhold his talents and skills from the community. He trained many of the young boys in boxing, and they in turn went to compete When, when to compete in boxing matches where they were often successful. Uncle Willis loved sports and cricket was one of his sporting passions, especially the Wule Labang competitions. These days always brought him to laughter and his face would be with that wide, enormous smile. He was also known for being an excellent volleyball player. Uncle Willis would ask his best for each sporting game and became the boxing captain, Wulelaba captain, and the volleyball captain. He was very much involved in community life. As the public relations officer of the Badney Mothers and Fathers Group, he was instrumental in their celebrations and developments. He readily lent a hand at Kudme in the community for either the building of homes or for Road works. The community looked forward to his cooking and baking. No one baked bread as well as my uncle did. And he would bake as long as the people demanded. His bread was noted as the best bread ever to have been baked. Long curving lines were formed with people waiting patiently for hours to purchase his local bread. Baking bread was an activity that he loved to do with his son, Elliston. Christmas time was when the people of Barney looked to uncle for their local supply of meat and delicious black pudding. His meats were from the animals that he read in his garden, so we all were assured that they were fed well. Uncle Willis had dweeved, always on an adventure, always on a go for good time. He traveled often with the mothers and fathers group around the island and for leisure and vacation, he traveled to the United States to spend time with his daughter Monica and his grandchildren. On Sundays, he visited Lage, Sunday was Lage Day, and spent precious time with his family there. His children always joined him on his ventures. He went all out to have the best time on Sundays, so when Monday come, one would expect that a man who loves his farming so much would not miss it. But no, not Uncle Willis. He would say religiously every Sunday, lady, he talk with Dimash, and he always rested on Mondays. He was a people person, self-giving and got along with everyone. He was always willing to assist anyone in need. He opened his heart and home to a lady from Cul-de-Sac who he sought 
to assist in her troubled times when her family had given up on her. That much love he had. She called him Daddy. He gave selflessly from his farm to his TV dog friends as well as to members of the community. His grandchildren enjoyed being with him, for he always had some goodies ready to give each of them. I remember uncle always asking me what I wanted whenever we met. Most of the time he was referring to food. And when it came to food, uncle loved a good meal. Whenever his friend asked him, Daddy, you eating that? He would say, Depi with Pama de Mwesa, Naimaji. Uncle Willis enjoyed talking to and engaging with others. He was always very warm and caring to me and would express how proud he was of me. He was truly interested in whatever was going on in my life and I will miss our conversation. He willingly shared his knowledge with anyone who wanted answers to questions. He was like the community registry. You do not know your grandmother's name? Uncle knows that. You want to know the children of your deceased parents? Uncle knows that too. He was the walking historian. But we always found it odd that the man we know as Uncle Willix, whose wife and children bear the surname Edmund, could not explain why his name was George Edmund Edwards. Who is this Edwards? Where did it come from? That was one question Uncle never found the answer to. Uncle Willix was a humble man. And God-fearing as well. Prayers were always on his tongue, in the Lord, he found the strength to fight through his last days. During the last week, Uncle Willix, with his family, he held his last video call with his daughter, Monica. She convinced him to rest and to try to eat. Eating and sitting still were very difficult for him. He rejected all types of food, never chewing or swallowing a bite. His daughter, T says, cared for him through his ailing condition to his death. She also cared for his wife. If anyone wants an example of honoring your mother or father, T says has showed us what that is. On the morning of his last day, after receiving communion witnessed by Christine, his niece, he chewed the communion like he chewed a meal of breadfruit and box, as his daughter, Lorena, would say. His eyes became wide open and he said, Saka fetla, saka fetla. Everyone was pleased because he had eaten and he seemed alive and well. But unbeknownst to his family, this was the day he would meet his maker. Lying on his favorite sofa, he closed his eyes and drifted away into deep sleep. He was in the loving presence of his daughter, Tisis, and wife, Sissy, when he passed away. Uncle Willix was a happy, jovial, and celebrant man. And today, though we mourn his loss, let us do it in the true sense of jubilation and celebration with which he approached life. So long, Uncle Willix. So long, Gwefe. So long, Daddy. Till we meet again, sleep in peace, vive la world. Thank you very much, Beverly. Family members, you may go back to the entrance to usher your loved one in, the pallbearers, the daughters, the sons, grandchildren. Please meet father at the entrance. Please stand.
Our celebrant this afternoon is Father Cleophas Joseph. And brothers and sisters, if you notice on your program, we will be celebrating the Holy Eucharist. And for us Catholic, this is very this is the highest point of our worship. So we are asking you to please cooperate. When it is time to stand, we invite you to do so. Sit and let us participate fully like Willix would have wanted us to. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you always. And with your spirit. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions, and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble, with the same consolation we have received from him. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the body of our brother George Edmund with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who baptized into his death, who baptized in Christ, who were baptized into his death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, George Edmund put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, they be clothed in glory. Let us now unite our voices as we join in singing, I will enter his gates.
Let's pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, George Edmund, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We now invite our two readers up on the sanctuary. First reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8. A time for everything. This first reading will be read by Peter Joseph, brother of the deceased. Everything in this world happens at a time of God chosen. He set the time for birth and a time for death, a time for planting and a time for pulling up, a time for killing and a time for healing, the time for tearing down and a time for building. He set the time for sorrows and a time for joy, a time for mourning, and a time for dancing, a time for making love, and a time for not making love, a time for kissing, and a time for not kissing. He said the time for finding and a time for losing. A time for saving and a time for throwing away. A time for cheering and a time for mending. A time for silence and a time to talk. He said a time for love and a time for hate. The time to wear the time to peace. What do we gain from all our work? I don't know every burden that God has given us. And he set the time for everything he has given us, the desire to know the future, but never give us the satisfaction for fully understanding that he does not. So I realize that all we can do is be happy and do the best we can while we were still alive. All of us should eat and drink and enjoy what we have worked for. It is God's gift. I know that everything God does will last forever. You can add anything to it or take anything away from it. The one thing God does is to make us have reverence for him. Whatever happens or we can happen has already happened before. God makes this time, the same time happen again and again. The word of the Lord. Together let us all join in singing, I thank my God.
second reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 1, continuing verse 6 to 10. We have an everlasting home in heavens. The second reading will be read by Jamal Girard, grand son of the deceased. We know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence. Then, when we remember that to live in a body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do out of faith and not by sight. We are full of confidence. I say and I actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we, are, whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ. And each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. The word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand as we welcome the gospel. The choir will lead us in the Alleluia. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison, and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his right, on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you. To the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you never gave me food. I was thirsty, you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never made me welcome. Naked, and you never clothed me. Sick or in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? 
a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And he will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Be sit. So once again to the family of our brother George, as a parish family, we wish condolences to you. We ask that God may be with you to strengthen you, to bless you, to support you in your time of, of grieving. So to tut from them for me, I'm Fuenu, Fuenu we licks, to come with you, body kai penu, body kai we stay you, body kai pote, mumasa, mumam twistesu. God will grant you peace. A few years ago, I had an interesting experience um, at a funeral. Um, afterwards, I I preach. I have a normal way of preaching where I remind people that life is short. And I remind them not to fight about things like land and, and houses and, and cars and all of those things. About a few months after I had that at such a funeral in a particular place. Someone came to me and she was, she was angry. See, you know, Father, I don't know what they told you, but next time you have a funeral for us, don't talk about land and about car and about house. And of course, I found out that the family had been fighting over the land and the house. The sad thing, though, is, you know, when I think about it, many people will go to hell for a house and a car and land. And I say it's sad because we all know that life is short. And we all know that we have we we to leave this world. And when we stand, you know, we, we don't judge ourselves. We stand before, before God Himself. The saddest part was this all of those who were fighting for people who were in church. Why do I call it sad? Whenever people say amen in funerals, I get a little, a little scared because it means that very often the word I'm saying has not applied to them. I'm not saying that it applies in this case. But, brothers and sisters, the way you're living right now, when you leave this world, where are you going to go? That's a question we all need to ask ourselves every day, but especially at funerals. Because we can be filled with so many distractions in life. Whenever we come to a funeral, we need to take the time to be still, to, to listen. Take the time to really reflect, because the truth is, and I used to be afraid of funerals for that simple reason. At every funeral, I would remind myself, one day it will be my turn. And every one of us needs to do that for ourselves. Remind yourself, one day it will be my turn. Now, just in case, Masaf Sivirik Sikite Piaste, Me Sikite Piaste, Pa Oblie Mwe. Don't forget me, yes? You love my number, right? But seriously, Jesus says to us in our gospel today, whatever you do to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do to me. I think there are a few things we need to take seriously if we want to get to heaven. But one of them is how we treat each other. It's not enough to just say you believe in God. It's not enough to, to come to church whenever you go to church, whatever your religion is. Jesus will not judge you by your religion. He will judge you by your heart. And, you know, it's a sad thing that many people can come to church and be the worst people in their families and in their homes. And if that describes you today, I want you to begin to think about it and begin to try your best to, to change. This is not to, to judge you or to condemn you because this is my time of, you know, of healing and so on. But remember, my dear brothers and sisters, death is the one place all of us must face and when death comes we all stand before God you don't stand before me I don't judge you at the end of time you don't judge me either no it is God we all give an account to and God is not impressed by how much money you have in the bank or your status or your church God will judge you by your heart by your love are you loving to those around you and if the answer is no fix it because when you stand before God he will not ask you about anything else not the house or the land or the car. He will ask you about your love. 
whatever you do to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do to me. So think about it. Do you curse anybody? Ask you as you are your son. If so, then you are cursing Jesus. Anybody you disrespecting? Anybody you don't like? Anybody you're not forgiving? Whatever it is you do to the least of these, could be the vagrant on the street. He will judge us by our love. Not by our houses, not by our status in society, not by our friends, not by our bank accounts. He will judge us by our love. In the end, love is all there is for God because God is love. At funerals, very often we can drink, can get drunk. I thank God for the rain because it means you can't drink outside. That's wonderful. So hopefully you're listening to me now and you take account of that reality that whether you are drunk or not, when death comes, you will be very sober when you stand before God. Take time to get your life in order and begin by loving one another. Loving your parents, loving your children, loving your spouses. Love one another because you will be judged by your love. Not by your fancy clothes or your shoes. You'll be judged by your love. I thank God. I know about Willix when he was alive. He was a, a good and loving man. I think so. At least when he was with me. So I believe that now that he stands before God, he can say, Lord, I was loving to my family. I was loving when I was alive. I think he can say that. He wasn't maybe a rich a rich person, wasn't wealthy, wasn't very the most educated person around, but in the end, he was loving. And that's what God wants from every single one of us. Your education is supposed to make you more loving. Your church is supposed to make you more loving. Your money is supposed to make you more loving. Otherwise, nothing else matters. This is my prayer for us today. If you find yourself not being nice to anybody, take time to fix it. Because when you stand before God, He won't ask you why. He won't ask you about any of those things. He'll ask you what you did to your brothers and sisters. My dear friends, it's a challenge because not all of us are in the right place. But I want you to know that when you die, I don't speak for you, neither can I judge you. But God will. And you cannot buy him, nor impress him with anything but love. Let us love one another. Amen? Amen. I invite you to please stand and ask family members with bidding prayers to please come up. Yeah, my dear friends, let us join with one another in praying to God, not only for our departed brother, but also for the church, for peace in the world, and for ourselves. the 
church. Heavenly Father, I present our church and its leaders to you. Help our church body to work together in unity and peace to, in order to deliver your word, O Lord. Give the congregation a gentle and humble heart as they interact with one another. Father, grant our leaders the grace and guidance to direct the church in a manner that is pleasing to you. Give them a patience and a forgiving spirit to set examples that are pleasing to you and to imitate the works of your son, Jesus Christ, when he walked on this earth. We pray to the Lord. for the family Lord we pray for the family of George Edmund Willick Lord apply healing touch to their wounded hearts and wipe all tears from the eyes of those who weep that they can see through the midst beyond death and grave to the resurrection and the life assured by the glorious victory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, over death and grave, we pray to the Lord. for the nation. Heavenly Father, we place our country, St. Lucia, before you. We ask that you write us in a single purpose of reclaiming this nation for you. We pray for an end to crime and an increase in love, faith, and a return to the values and virtues that you established for us. May goodness increase and the evil decrease as we grow in faith to consecrate our lives to you. We pray to the Lord. Prayer for the sick, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. In your presence, Lord, we lift all those who are facing various illnesses, especially Agatha Edmund, also known as Cece, the wife of Willix. Give her and others the hope and courage needed. Comfort their pain, calm their fears, and place your peace within them. We pray to the Lord. Prayer for the youth. Heavenly Father, our young people live in desperate times. Allow them to seek first the kingdom of heaven and all the rest will come in line. We pray to the Lord. Father, you, have, you gave us George Edmund as a dedicated and hard-working father and husband, a caring brother, 
a charitable citizen, a remarkable friend, a God-fearing man. For this, we are grateful and we say thanks be to you. Heavenly Father, may, may after passing through death, share in the co, co, co fraternity of this, the saints and eternal life, like you promised Abraham and his descendants. Grant him a just reward, we pray to the Lord. O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the soul of your faithful departed, George Edmund, release from all his sins. Hear our prayers for those who we love and give them the pardon they have always desired through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord has blessed us, and this is our moment to give back. This collection is for the Badney Chapel to Jabadnik Isia, Nouvelle Wear the Lila alone. So make sure you all push your hand deep in your pocket because it's going back to you all to continue the work in the Badney Chapel. As we do so, let us all join in singing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on us. It's not in your hymnal, your leaflet. We are sorry about that. But those of us who know it, let's all join in singing. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, so let us give heartily.
now join in singing our offertory song, Take My Life, My Lord. my dear friends that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be attentive, O Lord, to our prayers for your servant George Edmund. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, George Edmund, we beseech your mercy that you did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior. May find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled 
by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gabriel our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, George Edmund, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And if the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those of us who are in a state of grace and wishes to partake from the banquet, you may do so with your mask on, left over right, and we know what we are supposed to do. As we do so, let us all join in singing, How I Have Longed. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of His body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother George Edmund may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. We shall now have the signing of the register. The four names that appears on the leaflet, please join Father Cross at the table for the signing. During this time, we shall listen to a special rendition, two of them actually, one by Claudius and one by Leanne. So at this time, Claudius will make justice and sing whilst they sign. woman is Agatha Edmund Sese, who is presently not doing well. Good day, church. I would like to do this song in, in, to pay special tribute to my grandfather. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 
Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. I first believe my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like On and in love, amazing grace. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns on and in love. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called him here below would be God for Leanne and thank God for Claudie. Together, church, let us say, Amen. thank you, Jesus. During this time, brothers and sisters, we shall witness the lighting of candles, and we all know what candles represent light. Exilani on se ishlaki chebe pi edmonies, say Willix, visiting the sick, making time for family, reaching out to the poor, the needy. It is Willix. Now we shall witness as we join in singing, carry your candle as the daughters place the candle before the blessed sacrament and want to carry on the legacy of the father. Oh 
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Let us now join in singing steel.
your response, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest got unto him, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of George Edmund, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. George Edmund, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. The choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And when Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Yeah. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Nous voulons vous remercier tout le monde qui fait pour CBC aujourd'hui. Tout ce monde qui a visité Willow, nous voulons vous merci, merci, merci en pile. Ce qui est occupé, nous savons, nous savons ce monde qui est ici, Lorena, Joycelyn, beaucoup de tout. Ce monde qui est ici, nous savons que vous un bon travail. Et puis nous avons dit merci, nous avons dit merci, merci, merci. We thank you very much, Father Cleophas Joseph. We thank our musicians. Those who did the special rendition, we say thank you. Family members, in cash or in kind, nous just let you merci pour tout le monde, because nous savons tout le monde là, by Willick, tout le monde là, by Willow. Nous just let you merci au fond, au fond de chez nous. Do not forget your belongings, your water bottles. Tout ça, vous venez et puis, allez et puis, s'il vous plaît, nous pas voulez vous à l'église. Et puis, quand nous allons aller, nous allons continuer à célébrer la vie, Willick, nous savons que c'est un monsieur qui est donné. Et puis, pour ça, famille, j'ai mis ensemble. Et puis, nous allons inviter un Prior's Pub. Côté, nous allons nous inviter un pass. En l'honneur, Willick. Souple, nous allons faire ça. Conducte quand nous bien. Et à nous pas oublier, ma Willow qui est l'hôpital. Et puis, Tico n'est pas bon. Mais Dr. Monica, tu es prédit, nous te gardons aidé pour dire. Il te dit qu'on s'en allait faux, il dit maman, qui t'es moins venu, ben moins chance pour moins venu. Pour me tuer les mains, et puis pour me prêter, et puis bon Dieu accorde ça. Pour ça, nous voulons dire bon Dieu merci. Let your will be done, Jesus. As we take our loved one to his place of rest. Somebody want the table to roll. Roll the table then.
Ay, 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 nous à la rose. Ay, 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 la ouin la rose. Et nous pas briller, nous caillons. Tout le monde, tout le monde. Mon couillé officier moi, mon couillé la ouin la rose. Mon couillé nous à la rose. Si nous pas briller, nous caillons. Oui, 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 ma maille la voie. Oui, ma maille la voie. Oui, 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 ma maille la voie. Oui, 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 mon fouillé nous à la voie, mon fouillé maman la voie, et nous pas fouillé, nous caillons. Oui, 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 maman la voie, oui, 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 maman la voie, et nous pas fouillé. Vive la rose, vive la rose. Ça va voir l'autre corps, il s'est aimé, parce qu'on a de l'autre aimé, il m'a dit nous fouillé. Bon, nous gardons celle-là. Fouillé, yo, la rose, fouillé, yo, la rose, fouillé, yo. Ma maille 
la wall. I la wall. Si li ki ti podye nou tou. I la wall. Si nou pa te ni fled la wall. I la wall. Jodi nou pa te kai viva. I la wall. La wall. La wall. La wall.
la Russe Vive la Russe encore Vive la Russe Power. Yeah. Na, 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 na. 
Brother George Edmund has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven.
with faith and hope in eternal life. Let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited on day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he with our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture. Come you are blessed by my father, says the Lord. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Remember that our brother may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light see light, and know the splendor of God. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our brother George Edmund from this life to himself, we commit his body to its resting place. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. If longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but us from evil. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again, Though we are sinners, we wish always to you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer for our, in sadness for your servant, George Edmund. Deliver his soul from death. Number him among your saints and clothe him with the robe of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. May your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. You cannot rest but unto him, O Lord. And let the light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, for the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. The songs?
is yet the older I get.